So you're curious about hypnosis and how it might benefit you and your life. The main reason people come to me is because they want to access a deeper purpose for being here. They want to transcend the emotions that are holding them back, the thought patterns that are no longer serving them, and the behaviors that they might be engaging in that are contradicting their deeper intentions. So it's important to understand a little bit about the mind and how it works so that you can understand better the process of hypnosis. So you have a conscious mind. The conscious mind is the mind that you are clearly aware of because you're conscious of it. It's the mind that thinks. It's the mind that um, houses your will. It's in, and this, has, this is your conscious will. It's the, the will that you are consciously aware of when you're choosing to make certain decisions in life. At a deeper level of mind, you have um, the subconscious mind. And this has another level of will. This is a subconscious level of will. It's a level of will you're not necessarily aware of. So here in the subconscious mind, you have all of the thoughts and the feelings and the emotions that you've ever had all stored in their own patterns that they keep going around in the same cycles of. You have all the emotions and the memories and the experiences that you've ever had stored down there. You have the um, capacity for creative and imaginative thinking. You have the capacity to heal. You also have the capacity to harm here. All of the subconscious programming that goes on is, is continually recording. It never stops. Even if you're in shock, if you're in a coma, if you're drunk and lose your memory, the subconscious mind has still stored it in there. So the subconscious mind also therefore because it's always been recording and because it never stops and because it records things that you're not necessarily aware of has information from the, the womb has information from the Bardo realm from your time and soul it's information about the point of your conception the purpose of your incarnation it has information from past life experiences it has information from all the bodies that you've ever lived in, all the lifetimes you've ever lived in, all the experiences you've ever had are stored in this deeper level of the mind. Beyond here, we have the super conscious mind. And this is where we access your soul. So there's, there's a hazy line that occurs between the subconscious and the super conscious. Because as you go deeper into the subconscious mind, you get more into the soul realm, which means you're entering into the realm of the superconscious mind. So the subconscious is, is the thoughts and the feelings and the behaviors that you have on a, on a sort of a lower level, if you like, a denser level. But as you proceed deeper into the processes that we do together, you'll come into the superconscious mind. And this is where the exciting soul purpose stuff comes from. This is where the desires and intentions of your deepest self, your truest, most freest self are. And we can uncover this information so that here we have a deeper level of will. So you've got the will of your conscious mind, the will that you're aware of, You've got the will of your subconscious mind, the, another a will that you're potentially not aware of. And at an even deeper level, you've got the will of your soul. So when we can access the information and the wisdom that comes from your soul, when we can access the desires and the intentions and the whole goal for being here, the whole game plan, if you like, then we, we can start to make some sense of the other things that are happening in your life that are holding you back from that. So whether it be anxiety that has brought you into this, um, this, this seeking for a hypnotherapist, or whether it has been depression or, um, or some kind of emotion that is no longer serving you, or whether it's some kind of behavior, some kind of addictive pattern that you play out, whether it be eating in a way that harms you, whether it be some substance that is no longer serving you. Um, just a note on substances. Um, if you need rehab, go to rehab, do that work, and then come see me, and we can go deeper. Um, if you feel like you need some sort of looking after while you wean yourself off, 
um, whatever substance you've been on, then do that work first. There's, there's other professionals that are specifically trained to help you in that part of that process. But once you've done that part, once your, your, your system is clean and you're more aware of what you're really dealing with, then you can come to me. And then I can help you really go deeper into this next chapter of your life and help you really stay on track so that you don't relapse. So whether it's feelings, emotions, behaviors, thoughts, ideas that you want to work on, it doesn't really matter where your entry point is. We just find the hook, the thing that you want, that you're really willing to do the work with. And that will send us on a, an amazing journey together. That amazing journey will uncover the, the, the purpose for your being here. It'll uncover the way forward for you that will serve you far more and appropriately than you've potentially currently been experiencing. So also housed in the subconscious mind is the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is told what to do by the programming of your subconscious mind. So how you are perceiving the world is telling your subconscious mind which way to trigger the autonomic nervous system. So it splits up into two parts, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic nervous system is your survival mode. It's fight, flight, freeze. When you're in sympathetic, you are really seeking to look after yourself to keep things safe and ordered and protected and on track. When you're in the parasympathetic nervous system, that is when you are, are more in spiritual growth and development mode or rest and digesting mode or relaxing mode, rejuvenating mode, healing mode. None of these things can you do when you are um, in survival mode, when you're in fight, flight, freeze. So the, the sympathetic nervous system, with the way I work with it, will pertain to the kind of work you'll do with the lower three chakras, the first, second, and third. Once we've done that work, then we can be more able to, to keep our check into the parasympathetic nervous system a little more easier. So we have the capacity for higher thinking, for higher intuition, for higher wisdom, for spiritual guidance, for soul connection. That's the kind of stuff that we're not able to really deal with very well when we're in survival mode. So how you're perceiving the world, if you're perceiving it as a positive, loving, beautiful place to be and that serves and protects you, keeps you safe, guides you and directs you in all the right ways, then you're going to have a much easier time living with the parasympathetic nervous system in action more often. This means that your blood pressure and heart rate can come down, your immune system will be supported in a really healthy way, your digestion, fertility, your endocrine system, everything will start communicating in a whole lot more of a healthier way when you can have your parasympathetic nervous system working more often. We need the two in balance because there's times when we need the, the sympathetic nervous system to activate. And that's going to be when you need to, you know, cross the road in a hurry to miss the bus hitting you or save your child from running out in the road or your dog or whatever it might be. Um, but we're not triggered in the way we used to be. The saber toothed tiger is not after you like it used to be. But there's a part of the brain that still feels like this is happening and that's going to be triggering your sympathetic responses. So you're going to be triggered into that stress mode that keeps you high, highly activated with high blood pressure, high heart rate, um, no time to digest food, got to run now. It's adrenal, adrenal, adrenal. So there's all this adrenal activity that goes on that will be releasing cortisol into your body and activating you to, to, to rush through things. Rushing syndrome. So through hypnosis, what we're doing is, is finding a better balance between these two so that we can perceive the world around us as a safer place, as a calmer place, as a more open and balanced place. When you have the capacity within you to relax, to calm down, to slow, to steady yourself, to quieten your mind, to find the still point within you, then you have the capacity to think outside of the box, to access deeper intentions, higher wisdom. You have the capacity to receive spiritual guidance um, from within or from another. You have the capacity to literally be 
more in alignment with that sole purpose for being here. So the basic point I think of hypnosis is to access the programming in your subconscious mind that no longer serves you so that you can shift your perceptions to a way that will guide your autonomic nervous system to, to keep you balanced between its two counterparts, the para and the, and the sympathetic nervous system. Once this is happening at a, at a better, more balanced level, then you're able to access the energy and information of your soul the desires and intentions of your true purpose. And when you can access those deeper desires and intentions, that deeper wisdom, then you get on track. Then things start to flow more easily. They start to feel better. We start to surrender to what is. And this negates the need for suffering. We might still experience pain, but we're more accepting of it. Therefore, we can move through it a lot more um, smoothly, comfortably. Transitions become easier. So hypnosis and the way that I will use it with you will help you to relax and live the life that you came here to live while being on target, while achieving your goals, while, while really creating the best life ever because it's possible. It's all there. We just need to access that information within you. The guru is really inside you. So I will just create the space for you to do the work in. Then the whole world opens up in a whole new way because you have the capacity to, to surrender, to let go of the egoic needs and to drop down or go higher. It depends. It's, it's, it's deeper and it's higher. So it's kind of paradoxical how we speak. So but we drop down into a deeper place. We, we elevate to a higher level of development or to a more um, soulful way of being. And that's how I like to experience it. When I just buckle up and lean in and let my soul take over, there's no questioning. There's no doubt. There's no fear. There's no um, anxiety. And those things are kind of still there, but I'm just not so affected by them anymore. They're, they're kind of just like, well, yeah, well, that's just that part of me that's got those things going on. But I'm living at a deeper level of, of understanding, a deeper level of experience, and it is beyond my egoic self when I'm living from soul. And I'd like to help you find that. And it doesn't matter if, if what you want to come to me for is to stop smoking or to lose weight, um, or if it's because you feel anxious all the time or depressed or you've lost confidence or you took a great fall and now you don't really want to get back on the horse's saddle, um, whether it's the, the mountain or or the golf game or the tennis or whatever it might be in the sporting arena, um, whether it's to do with relationships, I, I've, I had my heart broken, I do not want to fall in love ever again. Whatever saddle you fell out of, Connecting to your soul self will help you get back in the saddle and this time ride in the direction that you want to go in, knowing that you'll fall again, because that's what we're here for. But when we learn how to fall in a way where we can learn why we fell, how we fell, and, and what we got out of that falling, then we can rise up with new energy and, and, and new aliveness and new wisdom, and we can move forward in a way that means we've got a point of contrast behind us for what we don't want to do again or how we don't want to feel and from there we can really experience how things really do feel on a when we feel good when we're on track when we're doing what we came here to do so in hypnosis what we're doing is we're uncovering that which set you up in the first place for the for the lesson and we're bringing that information up into the conscious mind where we can review it there's many different ways of performing hypnosis. Many hypnotherapists will only use suggestion therapy. And in my experience and in my training and in my humble opinion, to just use suggestion therapy is, is not doing the whole job. Suggestion therapy is what you use at the end of the session. What you do all the way leading up to the end of the session is find out what needs to be suggested. So I could be telling you, oh, I'm very, very anxious, and it's because this, this, and this happened. Can you please help me reprogram that? 
Well, that's all very good and well. But when we get into the subconscious mind, the reason why you're feeling anxious could be entirely different to what you are consciously aware of. So the key is to find out what is going on in your subconscious mind. Why is your subconscious mind creating anxiety, triggering your sympathetic nervous system, putting you into fight and flight responses so that your heart is elevated, your blood pressure is going, and you're in this, I don't want to do this, and you're fearful. Why is that actually happening for you? So in my chair, what we will do is we will uncover the experience that is causing your stuff. Not what you consciously think. No. We will uncover what is actually going on. And we, I will dig and dig and dig and dig until I find it for you. And so you act as co-therapist with me. Your job is to give me the information. In other words, I ask the questions, you answer them. And the answers that come, they're coming from a place that typically you're not consciously aware of. And so then I can feed the information back in a way that you will understand and that will help transform that part of you that is, is tripping you up or holding you back or keeping you blocked or stagnant in some way, shape or form. In other words, the part of you that is not letting you live your soul purpose, that is not willing to, to, to surrender to the higher wisdom that's available within you. We all have it. We really do. A lot of people ask me what kind of client do I prefer to work with. It's an interesting question. The people I like to work with are the ones that really want to help themselves. They're the ones that want to evolve and grow. They're the ones that want to understand their programming and conditioning, to understand their story of this lifetime and past lifetimes. And they want to transcend it and connect into the truth of who they really are, why they're really here, what they really came here to do. So if you're one of those people, it doesn't matter if your entry point is, I'm, I know that smoking is preventing me from living my soul's sole purpose. Or all this extra weight that I'm carrying is preventing me from feeling alive in the way that my soul wants me to. Can you please help me lose weight? Or I'm too skinny and I don't eat too much and I binge and purge. I don't want to do that anymore. It doesn't really matter where your entry point is. I'm anxious. I'm depressed. Or um, I've been practicing yoga for a while now and um, I'm starting to realize that I'm not who I thought I am and I'm a little bit scared. Brilliant. Beautiful. I feel really resistant. I don't want I don't want to live life anymore. I, I don't see the point. Beautiful. Bring it all in. Bring in your resistance. Bring in the fear. Bring bring it in. But above all, bring in the willingness to work with it all. If you're willing to work with it all, I would love to work with you.